Много трудно се говори за двама добри приятели, като Борис Христов и камъните, и природата, които от а, толкова дълго време, сякаш от векове, а, си говорят именно къде с мълчание, къде само с някоя мимика, къде само с а, начина по който стоят на мястото си. В тези четири стишия Борис Христов сякаш тътне, сякаш долави има отдалеч звукът от недрата на земята, който трябва да ни предупреди за кризите с духа, за кризите изобщо, може би, с планетата, но точно както в едно от четиристишията пише, че работата на добрия скулптор е не да извае самия камък, а да извае неговия постамент. По същия начин поетът не трябва да пише стихотворение, а по-скоро да направи така, че то да се озове на белия лист, преминавайки през него и възможно най-малко да го замърсява. И вярвам, че тези текстове са точно такива, възможно най-чисти, възможно най-казващи, като в същото време мълчат и стоят на мястото си. В тях трудно може нещо да се издълбае повече. Когато говоря за Борис Христов и за поезията, няма как и да не кажа нещо лично. Седяхме веднъж на масата до галерията в Лещен. Говорихме си за зимнина и той каза, че маринованите чушки, това е поезията. Нещо, в което аз безрезервно вярвам, по същия начин, по който мъхът, дърветата, старото ремарке, гумата от камион са поезия. Тези стихове, тък му това е постигнато някакси, хваната е реалността. В рамките на този проект това е допълнено по един впечатляващ начин от Милко Бошков. Няма какво друго да кажа, освен слушайте, мълчете повече, доверявайте се на мълчанието, на думите и оставяйте природата да минава през вас по начина, по който тя е преминала през Борис Христов, за да се озове в тези стихотворения. The stones have always known where they are going and have never lost their aim. But man appeared in their way when he alone began to build his muddled roads from stones. Words once had the strength of a tusk and could kill a man at a touch. But built up into herds on the white page, they acquired the capacity to wipe out whole nations. When it tires of staying awake, the stone falls asleep and in its dreams it sees how, released at last from the mythical grip of Sisyphus, it surmounts the ridge of the mountain on its own. An ancient ritual among stones, as among people, is the wedding kiss. But the artistic caprices of mankind, with the blows of the hammer and the artifice of the chisel, dissolve their primeval union. Every stone is marked at birth as a perfect creation. The work of the artist in the salon of nature is patiently to shape the pedestal. And for that reason, O oh artist, When you carve the stone, do not try to take away from its flesh, nor to add to it. Whatever be its form, you are encircling a single egg. Dark and deep are the layers of good memory. Remember this fossil, for before death it was a bone, and the bone is in no hurry to forget that in life it was once a person. I hear at night the voices of stones around the new building. The rejected ones rage because the masons chose them not by their soul, which is eternal, but by their face, which dies. Do not look at a man when he does not see you, because you will not see the other who is looking at you. And together with him, you may join the ranks of the blind passing along the road. 
We fly over the books as over dangerous reefs, eyes shut with fear that we might fall into the meaning, lurking like a monster in the deep. You write, but the book is not more important than that, to meet on the earth your stone and to bond with it for life. And one day, like a centipede, to settle under it. The poets are being born on a sinking frigate in a little bay at the end of a war, and their life, they assemble stones from sand, is laid out until the beginning of the next. What a fate, that of a stone in the midst of the desert, standing upright like a stylite over the brotherhood, split across the sands. Jets of scalding heat burst from his spirit, but the body does not cast shade. The frivolity with which mankind goes through life and hurls down the innocent stones into the abyss often makes me sing out of fear as if I am going through a graveyard at night. Ever more frequently the bowels of the earth use the stone as a messenger to announce to people that the well of patience is nearly used up and will soon run dry. In vain you worry infinity, O oh little man. Indeed, have the constellations on the ladybird's wings not revealed to you the universe alighted on your palm and that you have already arrived? If they come someday, they will emerge from the direction of the stone where they have lived from the very beginning and from whose rifts and hiding holes they so unobtrusively observe the world. More and more the earth brings to mind the beggar, sitting down for a while in the mists by the Milky Way, waiting before darkness falls to be taken in by some compassionate householder. Reaching the end of life, it is indeed necessary to reflect through whichever door of the stone you enter. You will find there, sitting in a welcoming pose, time itself. Like the water reaches its final target because it has harnessed the fish to labor for it, so too all words contain at the end just one which leads man to silence. That we had stayed with the few words with which we designate the most important things, with the sounds of pain, with the interjections, and with the buzzing of madness. At the end will remain to thunder along the stone way between the ruins only the staves with which the gods brought us to this shore and helped us to destroy ourselves. Try at times, at least for a moment, to be a stone and you will feel how the saving water rushes towards you and a fish of wisdom comes to lie upon your heart. <laughs>